Hello guys, welcome to another video brought to you by Riyadh Kuba, an English teacher. This is the second part of the lesson entitled Life Concerns. And in this lesson, we're going to learn how to deliver and write a presentation, which can be one of the writing tasks in the baccalaureate exam. If you're interested and you want to find out more, please continue watching this video. <laughs> Welcome back. As today's lesson is on writing a presentation, we will take this uh, writing task uh, as an example. After watching the doctor's TV show, which talked about the importance of eating your five a day, you decided to deliver a presentation in your school courtyard to a group of schoolmates to raise their awareness of this concept, explain what counts towards their five a day, and elicit the benefits that this can bring to people. As you can see, this type of writing is not an article. It is not a speech and it is not a letter. This is a presentation. And the format of a presentation is completely different from the other types of writing. Because of that, I'm going to define what a presentation is first. A presentation is the process of presenting a topic to an audience. It is typically a demonstration or a lecture meant to inform, persuade, or present a new idea, a new product, or a new concept. So, when you give a presentation, you will be standing in front of an audience and aim to get people to do or get something. To make things practical for you, I will give you a mock presentation and then analyze it to better understand how a presentation should be delivered. Thank you. Thank you. Hello. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. My name is uh, Riyad Kuba. I am a dietitian and I am delighted to be here today to talk to you about eating your five a day. So my presentation is divided into two main parts. In the first part, I will talk about what counts towards your five a day. And in the second part, I will talk about uh, the benefits of eating these five a day portions. Some of you might have been wondering about what five a day is, as this could be the first time you've heard about it. Before going any further, I would like to give you some background information about this concept. The five-a-day concept came from a World Health Organization study done in 1990, which recommended that our minimum intake of fruit and vegetables should be at least 400 grams a day to lower the risk of severe health problems such as heart disease, stroke, and some other types of cancer. In 2003, the United Kingdom launched the five-a-day advice. In 2016, the Public Health Service in England declared that five fruit and vegetables a day is an affordable and achievable target and the cornerstone of a healthy, balanced diet. So the questions that some of you might have asked are, what counts towards your five a day and what are the benefits uh, of these five a day portions? That's what we're going to be talking about in this uh, presentation. So let's get started now with the first question, which is uh, what counts towards your five a day? Well, the answer is as easy as one to three. When you divide this out, you end up eating your five portions of fruit and veggies a day. If you want to get your five a day the easy way, try this simple meal plan. Make sure that your meals include vegetables and fruit in them on a daily basis. So for example, in the morning for breakfast, you can add fruit and cereal porridge or a lower fat yogurt. Or you can add uh, mushrooms or tomatoes to scrambled eggs and drink one glass of uh, vegetable uh, juice or a quick smoothie in a blender using your favorite fresh or frozen fruits. As for lunch, add some uh, crunch 
to your sandwiches with the lettuce, tomatoes, cucumber, or grated carrots. Or enjoy a portion of cucumber, peppers, and carrot sticks with dip. Finally, at uh, dinner, have a salad or vegetable side dish with your main dish. Add a portion of frozen vegetable to your dinner. If you're having a roast dinner, for example, add some carrots or broccoli to your plate or simply sprinkle sweet corn or pineapple chunks on top of a thin based pizza. And there you have it. Five portions of fruit and vegetables without any hassle. Now let's move on to talking about the benefits of uh, having your five a day. By having five a day, you reduce the risk of cancer and diabetes. So that's number one. You can have more energy, vitamins, and minerals in your diet. That's number two. You will also enjoy a uh, healthier lifestyle and have a stronger immune system. You will also have fewer calories and less fats in your diet, which can improve your digestive system and help you lose some weight. As you can see, the benefits of five a day are numerous. Now, we've come to the end of this uh, presentation. I've been a dietitian for 15 years, and I've always given people such presentations to give them a wake-up call to get them to start changing their eating habits. Because I strongly believe that good health is the most important thing, more important than money, more important than success, and more important than power. The question now, isn't it high time you started your five a day? I hope so, because a healthy mind in a healthy body. That's all for me. Thank you so much for your attention, and I am ready now for your questions. Let's now shed light on the elements needed to write a presentation. The introduction of a presentation should include a greeting, your name, your job or position, the topic of the presentation, and the structure of the presentation. This part here is very important for any presentation. You cannot start it without giving a general background about the topic, especially if it is a new concept or a new idea. So here you can give some history about it so that the audience can get an idea of what you are talking about. The next part of the presentation is the transitional question. It is intended to help move from the general background to the body parts. Another way to do that is by asking a rhetorical question. A rhetorical question is one which aims at drawing people's attention and interest rather than getting an answer. It is intended to start a discourse or to put across the speaker's attention. Since my presentation is about what counts towards your five a day and its benefits, I have asked two rhetorical questions. Each refers to one idea and one paragraph. As you can see, this paragraph here is the first main idea of the presentation and answers the question of what counts towards your five a day. This paragraph, like any other paragraph, is composed of a topic sentence supporting details, and a concluding sentence. So keep this in mind. The sentence here, let's get started with the first question, which is what counts towards your five a day is the topic sentence. A topic sentence is one that introduces the content of the paragraph. As you can see, it is clear that the paragraph is about what counts towards your five a day. The second part of the paragraph we find the supporting details. This part here contains three main ideas. The first one is what we can eat for breakfast. The second one is what we can eat for lunch. And the third one is what we can eat for dinner. After that, I have explained each one of them with some examples. Then I ended with a concluding sentence which summarizes the ideas of the paragraph. 
this sentence here, and there you have it, five portions of fruit and vegetables without any hassle, is the concluding sentence. The same has been done for the second paragraph, which is the second main idea of this uh, presentation. This is the topic sentence, these are the supporting details, and this one is the concluding sentence. Keep in mind that your paragraph should always contain uh, these three elements. This last part of the presentation is the conclusion. As we know, a good beginning leads to a good ending. To end your presentation in the best way possible, you should first uh, recap the main points covered in your talk by repeating the core message of your presentation. Then, use a quote to make your presentation more motivating and convincing. Then use a rhetorical question to leave the audience with a thought-provoking question, but don't answer it. Instead, leave them to ponder the question for themselves. Finally, thank your audience and ask them to interact with you by asking you some questions. Now let's move on to the practice section. After watching this mock presentation and learning about the elements needed to give a good one, write a presentation about the following topic and use these expressions to make uh, your presentation more authentic and real. Write a presentation in which you raise your friends' awareness of the dangerous effects of smoking and advise them uh, to quit smoking cold turkey. That's all for me guys, thank you so much for watching this video, I hope you've enjoyed it. If you have, don't forget to give it a big thumbs up and also to make sure to subscribe to our channel so that you can get notified whenever I upload a new video. Thank you so much. Love and peace. Riyadh.